I'm going to show tonight is just uh, off the butterfly and uh, when we're kind of in this, this hand fight position I'm going to look for like uh, I'm going to look for the sweep this side so we've done this butterfly sweep before okay it's coming this way um, what I want uh, for the, for the uh, guillotine setup is that my opponent tries to put his head and his hand onto the mat to try and prevent himself so if I do the, this effectively the only way I can really stop himself is by ditching his head down here and that's when I'm going to come up snatch up his head okay so we're going to look to try to do two things one, one is we're not going to try and hold his head so much as put our chest on top of the back of his head so from here when I go for the, for the sweep okay I'm going to try and think about putting my chest in the back of his head and I'm going to put my chin on his back that's what we're going to take off when you grab the neck here we're not going to do a big we will later we'll get a bit more meat on it when we do the high elbow variation but for now we're just going to try and hold his chin okay and keep your thumb um, the, you see the way my hand is shaped there you see that pointy thumb we're going to keep that on this side of the neck so I think about putting this part of my hand between my thumb and the base of my thumb here so my thumb look on the base of my thumb into his the side of his windpipe here on this side and when we're going to finish the guillotine what we're going to do is instead of thinking about squeezing his neck or stretching back we're going to think about taking his trachea and pushing it across his neck like this okay so getting his Adam's apple pushing it across his neck here and there's going to be a number of few a few other bits as well first thing is we're going to have the elbow on the mat we're going to keep his head on the mat here and we're going to keep our chin tucked really really tight you can see I'm keeping the butterfly hook in and from here now it's not a very strenuous finish so I shouldn't see anybody squeezing the head instead I want you to target the windpipe okay don't think about squeezing or like a, like a rear naked choke on the front of his neck that's not what we're doing so here I go for the sweep he blocks snatch it up from here adjust your hand as much as you want keeping your knee on the outside for the butterfly the other foot going in here keeping the base up we're not doing it let him be out too easy from here we can fall back but we're going to keep our chin to the um, to the back to the base of the spine here or to the top of the spine and from here i finish when i finish i'm just gonna scoop with my hand okay so once again i go for the sweep okay Easy little drill to start with, let's go back and forward. Um, we'll go into detail and finish in a sec. Yeah, let's go shoot to it. Not too long, so from here, when you're going for here now, look. Uh, almost everybody's doing this, look. Not hope in hell. He'd want to be offering me his neck to get the guillotine from here. So if you look at what we're doing here, actually it was really good when we, Felipe Andrews here last week about the foot lock. If you were here for 50-50 class and he was talking about not leaning back when you're fighting for the legs, if you remember that. He's like, you always do like this when you're fighting for the legs, in the 50-50. And it's the same thing when I want to go for his head. If I go here like this, and I fall to my shoulder, there's no hope. Like, it want to be early Christmas presents to get it. And I think one of the big problems when you actually go to finish it, is that you're always on, on your back. So even if I do successfully get it, say from here, if I'm flat on my back here, it's actually very difficult to finish, and Adam can use a lot of his uh, body weight here you can defend really really well so what I want to be is facing sideways when I'm finishing the choke okay I want, be, I want to be on one hip on my elbow or on my shoulder okay so I'm going to start that from a really comfortable position so whenever you're playing the butterfly guard you should never look like you're in the middle of a sit-up like you're here okay because you're off balance you should always be nice and comfortable so when I go here like this look how see I'm still sitting up tall and I can stay here forever and then I can fall on the guillotine like so, okay, so let's see, with better posture at the start, sweep them to the side, because some people when they're going to throw the head, they're throwing it back onto themselves, and they're even they're going square, so I'm going like towards this direction here, and when you do the sweep, practice the sweep as well, we've done it before, this is a club with your hand, it's perfectly legal, there's nothing wrong with it, you're pushing, you're not hitting them, but from here, when you go, it's, Right, that's what you want. And if he doesn't like getting clubbed around the ear, there are loads of other spots. <laughs> All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Two reasons, I'd say, for losing the guillotine or for not finishing the guillotine 
uh, one, probably number one on the list is going flat here. Okay, because this gives him like really good angle to escape, especially when you've got like the open guard like the butterfly. When the guy pop, pops up now, postures all the way up and comes up, starts to smash his shoulder in. That's a bad position for me. So if I can keep him on this side, and that's what I'm going to use this. When we did the guillotine before from in this class, we used the leg wrapped over the top, which is the different seated position. In this one we're using the butterfly, but the leg is going to do the same uh, thing. So I like to do two things with my legs. One is obviously just keep this butterfly hook in on this side, because that's going to prevent him a little bit from going that way. I can also keep kicking him this side with that. So what I mean by that is, I can keep, keep kind of lifting him this way so he can't go. And this other one stays tight, so he can't uh, easily just change position. And you can see even now I'm hooking my foot around the back of his calf. I'm not just going like this here. Right, lift your leg out. Yeah, you see. So here, go. It's kind of a bit more jams. Gives me a bit more time to finish. So. Uh, that would be number one, would be going flat. Uh, number two, uh, they're going flat to your back, that is. Number two, I think, is squeezing and stretching instead of going. There will be times where you will stretch and you'll finish it. Just the guy's neck, it's really extended. So there will be a time to go here, like this. But I think most of the time, when you see people at like a uh, Kind of beginnery level and novice level when they begin to stretch that's usually a bad sign the guy can bring his hand up onto my elbow start to push it down and pops his head out eventually and freeze it so we're not going to stretch we're going to compress right so when we go here now whoop, uh, posture and balance see the way i'm still seated now when i go here i'm actually going to bring my chin to his back and what i'm actually going to think about doing to finish is bringing everything together so bringing my head down towards my knees my knees up to my chest and that is actually worse for him because that's going to create this, like that kind of cranking pressure in downwards. When I stretch away, his chin starts to lift. He gets a little bit of relief. When I go towards, I like push. I'm pushing everything together. That's good for me if I have the good hand in underneath. Are we happy enough? All right, I'm just going to give you a little bit of work to do on the setup because if you can't get to the position, you're not going to get it. All right, so from here, what I'm going to get you to do as well is just pop a little bit out to the side and then snag up here like this. What some people are doing is they're leaving this hand over the back. Now they've got a job to do here. The arm in guillotine is fine, but we're not doing that tonight. So let's try and get it from here. This hand is already in position. Switch it. Chin to the back, knees to your chest, compress everything. Good to go. Three to one. Me and me, Barry. <laughs> so we're going to think of now, right? Uh, with the, the choking hand. Okay, so I'll show this just kind of from the knees first and then uh, we'll do the guard position. So, the high elbow guys is really, really effective. Uh, and I, I think it'd be a very rare occasion. Like you get the guillotine sometimes, the guy can fish his fingers in and come out and, uh, and defend really well. But when you get the high elbow, it's very, very rare that they don't have. Extremely rare. So, for the high elbow, my hand goes inside, and I'm going hang on hands, okay? So hand goes deeper, as we spoke about earlier, I like that, it's not gonna, there's gonna be a case where we do put the hand through. Hand all the way through, hand on your heart, and you got a hand over the top. And then we got the circle over with the, the cranking motion. Five, high elbow, okay? From here. This is really important now that I'm up and I have this posture. When I'm back here, I can still do it, but it's very difficult. Sometimes when he's driving the shoulder in to get that space. So now, when I have the posture and I've got my good seated position after I've taken him off balance over to the side, it's a bit easier. So from here. Okay. Sorry, I'll go there. From here, I go to sweep. So the, it works like um, yeah, a bit like the short choke from the back. Hand through to your chest, circle over onto like this trap here, and then drive down this side. You can see that. That's it. One more time. Nice and 
slow. For Adam's sake. Yeah, so you can have the initial one. Deepen. And that's why I like that grip there, guys, for the guillotine. Because it kind of switches between. Changing. Yeah. Good go. Any questions? Come on. Three, two, one. Okay, easy. Great. So this is not uh, fancy. Not fancy. Looks fancier than it is. It's not fancy. Okay. So when I go for the sweep here, I swallow his head up again. Again, what's Adam's job? He's going to try and roll me to my back. If he can roll me to my back, he can take the pressure off. Okay. Again, nice tight hooks here like this. Now what can I do? I can try and like kick him back over and get on this side and like go back for the choke, okay? And I can still finish from here, of course, right? But from here, when I feel him pile his weight forward, that's what he wants to do. Instead of like trying to flog a dead horse here in this position, I'm gonna use my butterfly hooks straight over. And we're gonna finish on top, okay? Same again. He comes up. I'm gonna try and finish here. The key is not to like uh, think about like kicking him over, just like roll yourself straight to the mount, use your head, and then use the finish here like this. The key is to use your head here as well. I said there's the key twice. The key is to go over your back, and the key is to use your head, and there's a lot of keys. Everything's the key, right? Everything's really important. So when you go here, you stack up the head. Again, what's his job here? You want to try and put you on your back, keep you flat. You kind of anticipate that that's going to happen, and you've got this as your combo. So if you're, uh, I'm in the right hand here, the right hand's in the guillotine position, it means the right shoulder. So don't kick him too far, you don't want him to run away. Just lift him and follow with your hooks. Try not to let go of your hands for balance. Sometimes you will need to, but if you do need to let go of your hands, make sure you keep the hand that has the guillotine. Okay, so just lift, straight over. Head use, using your head, but if you need to take your hand off, that's fine. You can always finish one handed as well. Are you happy enough with that? All right. Why are you listening to your neck out, Carlos? Are you anticipating that this is going to hurt? <laughs> Good to go, yeah? Let's go. Three, two, one.